Uh, one of the best headlines I've seen all year, mm. coats and daggers, question mark, just fun and games. Terrific headline on the front of the Australian. In the end, Anastasia Palaszczuk is off to the Tokyo Olympic Games opening ceremony. She'll be among a 1,000 invited guests tonight in a near-empty stadium to watch a muted extravaganza uh, and the entry of about 50 Australian team members led by basketball uh, basketballer Paddy Mills and swimmer Kate Campbell, who admitted to secretly practising with a broomstick for the occasion. But getting there has been a political and diplomatic minefield. Olympic kingmaker John Coates, the IOC vice chairman, who sat next to Ms Palaszczuk on Wednesday night after triumphantly winning Brisbane, the 2032 Olympic Games, has been accused of bullying, mansplaining, or worse, demanding that the Queensland Premier attend the ceremony. Now, look, Lisa, there's no doubt that Anastasia Palaszczuk should be at that opening game ceremony. There will be a 1,000 big, big hitters there. Uh, it's important that she fly the flag for Queensland. I don't think that is the issue. The issue here is the way in which Coates spoke. Uh, he says it was just a joke, that he was just trying to get her off the hook politically because, she, you know, there's been a lot of argy-bargy about this trip. What are your thoughts? Mm. Well, you're right. There has been a lot of argy-bargy. What nearly 140,000 people signed a petition to say she, she should not go to Tokyo at a time when you've got people who can't make it into Queensland or aren't given exemptions to come to Queensland to be with dying relatives. Why should the Premier go to Tokyo? But, look, I'm with you and I think I'm with, you know, almost all Australians, that it's fantastic to see another Olympics here in Australia. And, you know, like you, I, I was in Sydney covering those Olympics and it's an incredible moment in history for a city to host the Olympic Games. So we have an enormous job ahead of us when you look at the infrastructure that needs to be upgraded, the infrastructure that needs to be built over the next 11 years, and it will cost a whopping amount of money. And even though the authorities are now saying it will be cost neutral, uh, that's still yet to be seen because we all know all of these sorts of projects absolutely blow out. But to step back to that press conference when we saw John Coates basically addressed the Premier of this state like she was a child. Like, I watched that and I cringed for her. So you couldn't see much of, well, much of her expression at all, thanks to the mask. But, you know, mansplaining, call it what you will, but it, it was, to me, it just looked disrespectful. And whether it was a tactic to try to give her cover so that she can go to the opening ceremony without being attacked, I just don't think it was executed very well if that was the case. And, look, I don't... I would assume perhaps there were some quiet words said afterwards while publicly they're saying there is nothing to see here, but it wasn't a good look. Lisa, uh, how do you think uh, the announcement has played out over the last 24 hours in Brisbane, in South East Queensland and, you know, the wider community, uh, the wider corporate community? I know you're at the cutting edge of the corporate community in Brisbane. Mm. I mean, to my way of thinking, and, I, you know, there's been couple of big lunches and big breakfasts in the last sort of three or four days in Brisbane. Uh, I think uh, the Brisbane business community is absolutely over the moon and I think that, uh, you know, this is the start of a generation improving um, sort of project in, in South East Queensland. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I know a couple of CEOs who were at a breakfast where the Premier beamed in through Zoom or, or Teams or whatever digital website she used to, to speak to everybody from Tokyo and they were all very excited and I'm talking about you know very grown-up men who are you know huge sports fans and just can't wait to see it hosted here in Brisbane all of the media coverage has been completely behind the games it was interesting though that my 14 year old daughter said to me uh, and maybe the enormity of the Olympic Games is a bit lost on her but she said to me great now we're going to have my generation's going to have to pay for that too so I found that interesting. <laughs> but look, you see the stories of 10 and 12-year-old kids that will be watching the games, watching, watching this announcement that, that's just been made, and that gives them hope. It gives them the chance that maybe one day I can follow my dreams and be competing in the Olympic Games in Brisbane in 2032. So, you know, it, at a time when the world is struggling with COVID and there is so much bad news... I watched the 6 o'clock news tonight and it was wonderful to see the first three or four stories were Olympics and COVID was pushed mm. down the rundown for the first time, I think, in probably 18 mm. months. So it is, it is hope. There will be a lot of people throwing stones about how much money is being spent, who's going to oversee the spend, is the Labor government with its record on, on spending capable of keeping this on track? 
Um, but, you know, they're all arguments and debates to be had down the, down the track. Right now, I've got sparkles on for you, Glee, so I know how much of a fan you are of this, uh, this Olympic hosting. I know, I know. I, I was very proud yesterday afternoon, I must say. Um, <laughs> the big challenge now, Lisa, for uh, the Olympic officials is to convince the public that this new paradigm, this new future host commission model, which is aimed at, you know, the host city mm. at being revenue neutral, that they get that message across that, um, you know, the days of, you know, you know, Athens and Rio where they spent a fortune and then all of a sudden the facilities have become white elephants and that sent, you know, the country broke is that those days are gone. Mm. So, but, but the messaging and, you know, that's your business, the messaging around convincing people like your daughter that it's not going to send the state broke is something <laughs> that I think the uh, Olympic movement have to be very, very cognizant of.